the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Rated by independent research, the most popular West Coast program in radio history. And Signal gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. A case for Mr. Carrington. Outside, a gathering of black clouds that turned the blue waters of Kingston Harbor to a leaden gray. The breeze blowing in from the Caribbean was heavy with moisture. And on the sugar plantations, in the grinding and boiling houses, Jamaican natives sweated and muttered that a summer storm was on the way. And as usual on Saturday afternoon, the veranda of the Myrtle Bank Hotel was a gathering point for men in white linen suits whose only talk was of sugar. 24 hours a day. Men who grew it. Men who shipped and sold it. Men who, by some mysterious alchemy, transformed it into an inspired concoction famous throughout the world as dark Jamaican rum. But Gordon Stone, for once, wasn't thinking of sugar. The girl was too charming. The cool, wind-blown American beauty of her too irresistible. He was admitting it to himself now. This wasn't just a passing thing with a summer tourist. He was in love, and he knew it. How's the drink? Wonderful. What is it? Myrtle Bank Punch. Huh? <laughs> Especially the house. I'd enjoy it more under different circumstances. Oh, stop it, Paula. You're not going to leave Jamaica. You're going to stay. We're going to be married. Everything's going to be... You're warm. wrong, Gordon. I'm sailing next week. Paula. I made up my mind when I saw the morning paper. The paper? There was an item about you and Mr. Wakefield. Something about how you would never sell out your interest in the plantation. But I, I... I decided you made a choice, Gordon. You know I won't stay here. I know now that you haven't any intention of leaving. Paula, there's nothing final about the head and That's deal. That's what I'm tired of, Gordon. You could make everything final and perfect by selling. You said you would. You haven't. That's why I bought myself a steamer ticket today. Now, wait a minute. That's not giving me a chance. Paula, please stick with me. Just a little while longer. These things can't be done in a day. It's been three months. It doesn't seem so complicated to me, Gordon. You own part of a sugar plantation. Sell it. Just like that, huh? It'd bring a lot of money. Not enough, Paula. I haven't done too well. My my luck hasn't been too good lately. I have some pretty pressing debts. Besides, the interests are all split up. Only 20% is mine. Yes, you've told me before. Mr. Wakefield owns 60% his son weighed the other 20 What's get that got to do with it? Paula, I've been very loyal to old man Wakefield. He likes me. Why, if anything happened to him, his share would go to me. It'd be over $300,000. Are you asking me to wait around until Mr. Yeah, Wakefield... Why, of course not. I, I didn't mean it that way. It's simply that, well, things can change, Paula. It's no use talking. You're practically admitting you aren't going to do a thing. I'm leaving, Gordon. You're not you... being fair, Paula. This is no time to desert me. Why, I'm almost ready now. I... What do you mean, almost ready? Why, uh, to talk things over with the old man. He... You did it again, Gordon. Did what? Another one of those peculiar <laughs> remarks. What's on your mind, Gordon? What are you really getting ready for? I just told you. Hedden hasn't come up with the right all proposition. All right, all right. Skip it. Promise me something, Paula. 
this ticket business. Say you won't I've go. I've postponed it too many times already, Gordon. I'm leaving on the next boat, that's all. Uh, beg pardon, sir. Oh? Oh, yes? A message for you. Inspector Carrington is waiting for you at your house. Inspector Carrington? Oh, he's an old friend of Mr. Wakefield's, dear. You better tell the inspector that Never I... Never mind, Gordon. I must go anyway. All right, Paula. Paula, I'll, I'll get in touch with you. Goodbye. Huh? Uh, would you like to take the phone, sir? The inspector... No, no. Just tell him I'll be out there in half hour. I'm just leaving. The rumble of thunder sounds overhead as you guide the car through the outskirts of town. Down the road, bisecting tall fields of cane on the flatland to the north. And you wonder, Gordon, if Paula knows. If she suspects there's a reason for those accidental remarks of yours. That from the moment you first saw her, Jamaica became a prison. And the tense, trapped feeling inside you began to build like the storm overhead. And that now, with her final decision... It's got to break. By the time you arrive at your house on the plantation, you've decided it doesn't matter much whether Paula suspects or not. You brace yourself a little as you walk in to meet your guest. Yes, Gordon, Inspector Charles Carrington is the last person on earth who should suspect you're planning a murder. Hello, Inspector. Good afternoon, Gordon. Oh, I'm sorry. I kept you waiting. Well, that's all right. Hated to pull you away from the charmer of yours, but it's rather important, I think. Uh, you're meeting with Wakefield this afternoon. Yes, in ten minutes, as a matter of fact. I want you to do a favor for me, Gordon. I'd be glad to. You know, of course, that the old boy's my closest friend, went to Cambridge together and all that, and I, I'd hate to see anything happen to him. What do you mean? Oh, I've never said this to him, Gordon, but uh, frankly... I'm quite worried about his boy, Wade. Oh, Wade. Well, I don't know. Exactly. He's not a... Now, I understand the two of them have almost come to blows in this hidden proposition. Wade wants to sell his interest. His father, of course, refuses to consider it. <laughs> it's sort of a chronic condition. Yeah, it's more than that. I think I know human character, Gordon. Lord knows I've dealt with it long enough. Eh, Wade's not like his father at all. Uh, to get to the point, I am very much afraid that boy's liable to do something violent if he's crossed too often. Mm. Old man Wakefield would jump down your throat if he knew you were thinking. Uh, I know it. That's why I'm telling you. If it were up to me, I'd get the boy out of the country. But you see, it isn't up to me. You think it's that serious? Huh? Well, it could be, easily. Wade is capable of anything. Such as? Killing his father, for example. Oh, come now, uh, Inspector. I've seen it before, Gordon. I know that look. He's fully capable of murder, and above all, he's got the motive. Oh, incidentally, I see you have a copy of my book on homicide investigation. Yes, yes, I've had it for some time. A little out of date now. I wrote it in 23 when I was at the yard in London. But uh, there's one thing in it that'll be sound as long as there are human beings, Gordon. Given the motive, nine times out of ten, you've got the murderer. Wade Wakefield's got the motive. And I'm afraid... Don't worry, Inspector. Well, I, I, I want you to look out for his father, Gordon. You're with him all the time, the two of you in business together and so on. You, uh, you needn't say anything to him, of course. But if you suspect the boy's up to anything, I want you to get in touch with my office at once. Uh, I'd better be going along. Oh, can I take you anywhere? No, no, my car's outside, thanks. Uh, you'll uh, go along with me on this? Why, of course, Inspector. I'd do anything for Mr. Wakefield. You know that. You see him to the door, then walk thoughtfully back into your study. Take his book on homicide investigation off the shelf. Flip the pages to a passage you've studied many times, underlined in red pencil. If there's one essential in the investigation of homicide, it is the element of motive. Given the motive, nine times out of ten... You've got the murderer. Carrington's creed, Gordon, and the key to your escape from the prison here, the open sesame to New York and Paula, and the $300,000 in proceeds from the sale of the plantation that will come to you if old Mr. Wakefield, your partner, dies. And above all, the thing that will send his son Wade to the gallows for a crime that you committed. Your mind is made up now. There couldn't be a better time, Gordon. The storm, the inspector. 
it's going to happen tonight. Yes? Gordon. Oh, yes, Mr. Wakefield. Wait here. You'd better get over right away. It looks as though I may need some help. I see. I, uh... Yes, sir. I'll be right over. With the prologue of A Case for Mr. Carrington, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. But now, since cooler weather is here to stay for a while, I'd like to say a word about an item that's going to have a lot to do with your driving pleasure from now on. Batteries. How's the condition of yours? One way to find out, of course, is to wait until your battery refuses to turn the motor over some chill morning. But a much better way is to stop by your signal service station regularly for a battery inspection. Your signal dealer will keep the battery water at the proper level for long, efficient service. If your battery has run down, signal dealers have the latest equipment for safe recharging. And should you need a new battery, mister, you've come to the right place. For the new batteries that signal dealers feature are not just another battery, no sir. Signal batteries are very special batteries built to exacting standards that Signal Oil Company is proud to stand back of. They're rugged, they're packed with power, and they're guaranteed. So remember... If it's the best in batteries you're looking for, you needn't look farther than your neighborhood signal service station. And now back to the whistler. The downpour has turned the plantation road into a pair of muddy ruts as you slog along in second gear toward Wakefield's big house on the high ground near the gate. And you're thinking now, Gordon, of the murder that will take place before the storm passes, of a custom-built case for Mr. Carrington, with a motive so strong he made a special trip to discuss it with you. You're thinking, too, of Paula and Fifth Avenue and dinner together at the Colony Club and a life in which sugar is simply something you put in your coffee. As usual, there's a violent argument in progress between father and son when you arrive. Don't you understand plain English? Of course I understand English. I was brought up on it. But I can't understand stupidity. I've operated this plantation for 30 years without your help. Easy, easy. Take it easy. Gordon. You'd better run along, Mr. Stone. My father and I are having a private conversation. And maybe you'd better shut up. Who do you think... Did you hear what I said? You're going to say that once too often, old boy. When that happens, let me know. Now, what is it? The same old thing. He wants to sell his 20% to heaven. I thought we'd settle that. You were wrong. Now that you're both here, I might as well tell you. Well, go on. I instructed your clerk yesterday afternoon to draw up the contract. Mr. Hedden and I have already had an understanding. What? The deal, in short, is made. Wait! I'm of age, father. My interest, my money, and my decision. Get out of this house. You hear me? Get out! Oh, come now. Don't you think you're being a little... Get out of here before I throw you out. Hmm. I'm sorry to leave the old ancestral home. If you want me, I'll be staying down at the hotel. I... I'm sorry, Mr. Wakefield, that that had to happen. You... You'll have to excuse me, Gordon. I... I think I'd better lie down for a while. As usual, exhausted by the argument, the old man goes to his room to rest. And you leave quietly by the back entrance. Walk across the mushy turf to one of the field office buildings. Little Mr. Knowles, the chief clerk, looks up from his desk as you enter. Mr. Stone, I've been waiting to see you, sir. I can't take any time right now, Knowles. If you don't mind, I'll have that agreement, the partnership arrangement with Wade. Uh, But that's what I want to ask you about. You drew that up yourself, you know. Of course I did. Something wrong? Why, yes. I'm surprised you didn't tell Wade there's a provision which makes it impossible for him to sell out. Oh? Did, uh, did you tell him, Knowles? Certainly not. 
But I think the matter should be cleared up, sir. I think... Stop uh... thinking, Knowles. Just give me the agreement. I was acting in the best interest of the firm when I drew them up that way. Uh, then you'll attend to it? I'll attend to it. Well, I should hope so, sir. Just forget all about it. Yes? Gordon. Yes, Paula. I've been trying to get you for an hour. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I was tied up I a bit. I know. I just wanted to tell you my sailing's been moved up. The boat leaves tomorrow night. Oh? You, uh... You haven't... Listen, dear, I, I'm going to see you tomorrow. We can discuss you it You haven't then. told me, Gordon. Are you going to sell? Well, I... I can't tell you now, Paul. I'm sorry. So am I. Goodbye, Gordon. Paula. Paula, I... That's all right, Angel. You'll feel better tomorrow. It's three o'clock now, Gordon. Time still to run through it once again in your mind. Time to temper your weapon. Add weight to your legendary loyalty to Mr. Wakefield. Your obvious hatred of his son. At four, you're sitting at the bar in Wade's hotel, waiting for him to appear. Talking to Sid Riggs, financial editor of the Kingston Express. So the old man threw the boy out of the house, eh? You know, I had no idea it would go that far. Oh, you don't know Wade. No sense, no perspective, hates his father like poison. No. Yeah, if it were me, I'd buy him a ticket. Get him out of Jamaica right now. Well, you can't play God, Gordon. Well, if it would make it easier for the old man, I'd do it. Uh, you think a lot of him, don't you? I think enough of him to protect him from a no-good son. I'd do anything. Wade is a... Oh. Go on, Stern. Say it. Hello, Wade. I didn't see you come in. Obviously. Not that that makes any difference. I've been waiting for you. Now, 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 wait a minute, Gordon. This is no place for you. There'll never be a better place, Sid. Stay out of it. What's eating you, Stone? Do you have any sense yourself? I'd break your neck. Now, listen. You listen. I want you to get out of town. Leave your father alone. What? So the two of you can go on running the company in the same old rut? Yes. If he wants it that way. What's your pitch, Stone? Where do you get off? And when? There's got to be more to it than loyalty to a stubborn old man what? who... Oh, yes, stop it, yes. Wait, wait. Another crack like that and I'll kill you. Hey, hey, cut it out now, Gordon. Cut it out. Leave him alone. If it's a fight he wants, I'll... Hey, stop it, stop it. I'll call the police. You can't fight in my hotel. Huh? Yeah, come on, wait outside. Come on, now you'll feel better. This isn't settled yet, Stern. Uh, please, Mr. Stern, don't continue it. I, I can't say that I blame you, but the other patrons... I know. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Grayson. <laughs> all right, all right. It's all over. More drinks at the bar. Uh, perhaps we talk in the lobby, Mr. Stone. Sure, sure. I'm going anyway. I, uh, I hope you realize I understand your position in this. That young Wade Of is... course. I wish he weren't staying here at all. Yeah. Oh, look, Mr. Grayson. As long as he is, you can do me a favor. Oh? Now, he upsets his father terribly. Anytime you hear that he's calling or trying to see the old man, would you let me know? Why, certainly. Thanks. And, uh... I'm sorry about what happened in there. It's all right, Mr. Stone. Give them something to talk about over their drinks. But uh, I hope it won't happen again. I hope it won't be necessary. Good night, Mr. Grayson. And you know that it won't be, don't you, Gordon? Because everything is fitting into place. Your well-established devotion to Wakefield. The fears you've expressed for his safety. The bad blood between father and son. All that remains now is to bring the two of them together. And you know how to accomplish that. At eight o'clock, you pull up in front of the big house, reach into your pocket for the agreement the little clerk gave you, and go inside. You find Wakefield in his study, and as he reads the contract, you know exactly what his reaction will be. Ah, and Wade can't sell out. Gordon, you're a wizard, an absolute wizard. Well, I thought there ought to be some out. Just a matter of tracking it down. <laughs> you certainly found the answer. <laughs> Wade can't make a move. <laughs> oh, and will I enjoy telling that young... Pup? I wouldn't be too hard on him after all. He's, he's got to learn. If he's ever going to be worth anything, he's got to learn. Yes. Uh, when are you going to talk to him? I'm going to get him over here tonight. But the storm and the way he feels, he may not want to come Oh, over. don't be ridiculous. I'll tell him just enough, Gordon, so that wild horses couldn't keep him away. Oh, I'll have him here in an hour. 
You know, I thought that's what you'd do, Mr. Wakefield. Well, wouldn't you in my place? Oh, I think so, yes. Huh. <laughs> There'll be words. Wade won't take this lying down. That's why I took a little liberty. Oh? Huh? I told your servants to take the rest of the evening off. Huh? You and Wade will have the house to yourself. <laughs> You can shout his head off. Oh, 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 Gordon, you're wonderful. Uh, I made no mistake in taking you in as a partner. I try to do my share. Hmm. But I'll be running on. Uh, why not stay? You should enjoy this. Oh, no, thanks. I think the next hour should be all yours. The drive across the plantation to your own quarters is pleasant, isn't it, Gordon? In spite of the mounting wrath of the storm. There's a tense, expectant feeling, some nervousness, but not enough to destroy the excitement. It's going so well. If there were any doubt that Wade would come out to his father's house, it's erased as you let yourself in, fumble across the storm-darkened room to answer your insistently ringing phone. Hello? Mr. Stone. Speaking. This is Grayson at the hotel. Oh? Mr. Stone, you asked me to call about Wade. What happened? Well, his father telephoned a while ago from the police out there. Shortly after that, Wade left. I'm sure that's where he's going. I see. I uh, hope there isn't anything to be alarmed about, but, well, the way he rushed out of here and all, You I... did the right thing, Grayson. Glad you called. I'll get right over to the other house. I don't believe you could get there before he does, Mr. Stone. I've been calling... I'll do my best, Grayson. Don't worry about it. You hang up smiling, knowing that your timing is almost perfect. But you'll have to hurry, Gordon. Wade can't leave that house before you arrive. You've got to murder Wakefield only a few moments after the two men argue and Wade drives off heading back to town. You've got to go through with the one thing that can bring you and Paula together. Grinding over the rain-soaked road, You hope that you haven't already delayed too long. A few moments later, sloshing toward the house, you know that it's all right. Angry voices, barely discernible through the storm, tell you that the argument between Wade Wakefield and his father has reached its height. You stand, straining to listen, watching the house, wishing that the storm hadn't cut off the lights. Then you draw back as the house becomes silent. Watch tensely. A moment later, a figure slips out the side door, and you hear Wade's car start up. And you know that he's walked out on his father once again, that he's heading back to town. It's simpler than you planned, isn't it, Gordon? Knowing the two of them so well makes it almost mechanical. You even know where to find Wakefield in the dark house. And you swing onto the veranda... Climb easily up to the bedroom window where he's certain to be lying down, exhausted from his own anger. You peer in cautiously, see him on the bed, moving restlessly. Slowly, you ease the window up. You lean into the room slightly. Take careful aim at the sleeping figure of Mr. Wakefield on the bed. told me to call you, Inspector Carrington, but I'm afraid it's too late. You're sure he's dead? I saw it happen. The hotel manager called me. I tried to get here as fast as I could. Wade shot him and drove off. All right, Gordon. I'll arrange to have Wade picked up when he drives into town. You stay there. I'll be right out. I'll be here. Oh, and Gordon. Yes? I wouldn't touch anything. Better stay out of the room. All right, but try to hurry, Inspector. I feel terrible about this. I know, but there's nothing you can do. Just go easy, old man. Well, that's that. (laughs) We'll be together, Paula. Sooner than you think. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, two points it'll pay every driver to remember if you want to be sure of the tops in quality when you buy gasoline. One... In gasoline... It takes extra quality to go farther. And two... Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. Yes, it's a fact. Mileage is the best yardstick of gasoline quality. 
After all, there's only one way any gasoline can give you quicker starting, faster pickup, and smoother, knock-free power. That's by helping your motor run more efficiently. And when your motor runs more efficiently, naturally you see proof of it on your speedometer in mileage. The very thing Signal gasoline is famous for. That's why we're so proud of Signal's good mileage, which has made Signal gasoline known from Canada to Mexico as the go-farther gasoline. And it's why we say, to be sure of the tops in gasoline quality, there are just two things to remember. One, in gasoline, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. Well, Gordon, the case for Mr. Carrington is complete now. It's simple, isn't it? So simple that the lowliest amateur in Kingston can add up the facts. Come to the conclusion that Inspector Carrington must inevitably reach. That Wade Wakefield... Furious with frustration, shot and killed his own father. As the minutes tick by, you pace the floor of the old man's study. Glance up occasionally at the door to the upstairs bedroom. The room which holds the key to all your plans. Paula, New York, and freedom. It's only 25 minutes since you called the inspector and described young Wade's crime when a car pulls up and you hear footsteps on the porch. Come right in, Inspector. You'd better come with me, Gordon. Upstairs. I think the door's locked. Never mind, I have the key. Here we go. Hmm. Dead all right, shot through the head. Yes, it's just as I told you. I saw Wade raise the gun and... A flash of lightning illuminates the room. And you get a good look at the body on the bed. Your knees buckle as it hits you. Of all the men in Kingston, Gordon, of all the men in the world, you've managed to kill the one against whom, in the eyes of Inspector Carrington, you had a solid motive. But I... Mr. Wakefield was... Wakefield is outside in the car, waiting. They quarreled. Wade fell and struck his head. His father brought him up here before going for the doctor. Wade. It was Wade. Yes, Gordon. It was Wade you shot. Funny, isn't it, Gordon? Only this afternoon I was telling you. Given the motive. And who had a better motive to kill young Wade than you? Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Gerald Moore and Mary Jane Croft. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen, with story by Joel Malone and Harold Swanton, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Next Wednesday, for a full hour of mystery, tune in a half hour earlier. Enjoy The Saint as well as The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>